So I want to do an experiment and I wanted to um, bring up some controversial topics and um, we've already bought a couple I think. Um, but the start having it where uh, you guys engage in conversation with you about controversial ideas. So um, this is a journey that we're on as we evolve ourselves and, um, and we'll talk about pet peeves we have um, but throughout this channel. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought today I'd let Eagle pick a topic. The last two times I did a lot of talking myself, so I'm going to let you pick the topic this time. Mm -hmm. Like a controversial topic that you think you might like to talk about. I have an idea. Yeah. Our current political system is not actually fighting about the issues they say they're fighting about. They're fighting about freedom, whether or not actual freedom should be allowed, or freedom, whether or not freedom should be allowed, or not allowed, and whether or not actual freedom should be allowed, versus their own individual variety of freedom, that basically just says that certain things should be free, and other things that they think aren't safe, or in the name of whatever they believe in, shouldn't be free. Translate. <laughs> All the major political issues. So, so you're saying that what's being up for grabs right now is whether freedom does exist? Whether freedom should exist. Beyond even does exist. And are there some parties that say that freedom should not exist? Yes, literally all of them have some sort of a thing that shouldn't, they believe shouldn't exist as freedom. Oh. Like, okay. Let's go to the to two hot topics, right? Should mothers be allowed to abort their children? And should we be allowed to own guns? And both of them, from both sides, are saying that something shouldn't be free. And both of them, it's for the interest of protecting some other thing, whether it be under other individuals from getting, um, you know, small holes in them, or under other individuals from dying. It's still a choice of freedom. But what do you mean by both sides? Both so sides believe they're protecting someone, and in the name of protecting something from someone... Hold on, hold on. Let's, 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 do, um, let's do gun control real fast. Okay. So there's one side that believes that there should be no gun control, and mm -hmm. there's another side that believes there should be gun control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're saying both sides... Well, I'm saying no, I'm saying... Well, so, uh, say for the people who, who want uh, gun law control laws put in place, right? Uh-huh. They're wanting to protect people by not having as many guns in the street. Okay, okay, so it's not both sides, it's both topics. Yeah, both topics. Okay. Both sides okay. have their topics, and those topics are trying to reduce freedom in exchange for safety or whatever it is they're trying to accomplish, so, whether they're misguided or not. Okay, so party A, actually be party A says there should be more gun control, but... Uh, no life control? No, I'm confused. Okay, well, specifically, the left stereotypically wants more gun control, mm -hmm. and stereotypically the right wants laws to make it so you can't have abortions. And both of those compromise freedom for the sake of okay, so some sort of goal. I see, I see. Okay, I, I think I finally understand. Okay, so the um, Republicans want their guns. They want the freedom of the guns. The right? of the they guns, they yeah. say, please have freedom, freedom. We, we believe in freedom. But then on the other side, they say, but you can't have freedom when it comes to abortion. You can't have freedom when it comes to your own body. Right. So, now, it's kind of a similar thing of you can't um, hurt other people, but there's some other issues that go beyond that. Okay, so the complaint is that each side is saying and arguing, we want freedom, but at the same time that they're saying that we want freedom, there's something else that they're like, but, oh, but you can't have freedom in this other area. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're selective in where they want the freedom. Yeah. And the other example is um, regulation and taxes and its counterparts, um, expression and identity. Which one's which? The, the Republicans. left want more regulation and taxes on businesses and elites, uh -huh. 
and the rights want more regulation on identity on uh, your expression of your expression and just your existence of how, how you present yourself so does a party exist that actually does want freedom for both yes it's called the anarchists <laughs> uh, what about the independents what about the independents maybe or depends the, on the one right depends on the, the independent right I mean yeah. there's a lot of parties that are like somewhere in the middle the centrists mm -hmm. which are ironic they're called the centrists here because if you were to go to Europe the only people would be called the centrists would be the leftists here, mm -hmm. which is a bit ironic, isn't it? Um. Now I've heard, I've heard, I saw on Facebook one uh, somebody posting going. Um, Some of the French centrists in America actually do like freedom all around, which is actually kind of nice. Uh -huh. Right. What were you gonna say? Sorry. Well, I was. Just thinking, I had seen a post um, where they're saying uh, they wouldn't vote for. Uh, they were talk They were commenting about the freedom thing of saying that um, anybody who wants control of this, 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 and this is not want freedom. Yeah, there's lots of things that so, people want control of. Okay, every side has their things they're wanting freedom, on, and their things that they're believing that the sake of sacrificing freedom is fine for. Right. There was, um, we saw the other day in that, um, in that newsletter, the, some quote by, um, Franklin Bell or something, or, oh, what was his name? The guy who discovered electricity. Okay, go ahead and say what was, was it him, or was it maybe somebody else? Some quote, and I don't remember the exact wording, but the wording was roughly somewhere along the lines of, those who sacrifice freedom for safety deserve neither. Those who sacrifice I think freedom that was the quote. for safety deserves deserve. neither. And I, I think that was the quote. Uh, I don't know if that's right, very, very accurate, but if you know the quote, we'll get neither. If you get, if <laughs> you know the quote, accurate. put the quote in the comments. Maybe we'll make a follow-up video. <laughs> okay, so the controversial topic is what is is the question we're asking our audience what their opinion is of what? How can you say that your side is liking freedom when both sides, at least as far as I've seen, and by both, I mean most of them, since I admitted, admittedly there are kind of more than two, but there's only two major ones, right. facet, sub-facets of each. Only two that are in the running. Although, there is, this great, there is this great uh, political thing that one of our friends um, told us about, where they're trying to redo the voting system so that instead of where you only pick for one party, and we really need to look up the name of this. It's some um, um, runoff. There, there's a CC, CGP grave video or whatever. I'll, we'll put it in the description. Oh, you will? Okay. Yeah, it's a really, really good voting um, idea system. My, my opinion, anyways. Seems very effective for voting. Hold on, we got to pause for a second. Sorry about that. We had to take a small break to answer Grandma's <laughs> questions. Um, yeah, so this voting system, something I really loved about it is that instead of picking a favorite, you pick three favorites. And then I can't remember exactly how it works, so hopefully that link that Eagle has gonna I think find. Mine's a bit different, but it's a bit similar. It works off the, the well, thing. Maybe I can I'm find. This works off the principle of runoff voting. Maybe I can find the one that I'm also uh, our friend, my friend recommended. Uh, but yeah, but it's the idea where instead of picking a party, and a lot of times like people don't want either party, and so the idea is you pick the your top three best choices, you know, of the seven candidates that are there, because aren't there usually, like, there's the left, the right, the centers, the independents, the green, I don't remember how many, who else there is, um, and that sounds way more ideal of having it. Anyways, look into it, we'll put the links in our description, um, 
I think it's very exciting, just a different voting system. The other thing that I would like to see a different voting system would be where we could vote from home and not where you have like, so if you have a good reason to vote from home, you qualify. If you qualify, then you can vote from home. But if you don't qualify, then you have to go to the office. And I think everybody should automatically qualify of being able to vote from home. And I really any like those to change that security system. Security concerns and logistics issues behind all that. But there's like those same security concerns we logistics banks. issues for... We do banks online. Banks are as we do high security as uh, the way well, they should be, right? Uh, what, yeah, but also, I mean... Blockchain, the, what's the whole blockchain thing? Yeah, blockchain's a good idea. It's Can't you do that with the, the voting? Kind of. It's a good, it's a good idea. So we should figure out how to implement that, maybe. If you have ideas of Although, how they could do security so that we could all vote from home, please let us know in the comments and please like let the government know and please like tell the world because, yeah, that just it should be just a given right that we can all vote from home. That it's insane to me. I'd rather even if it's just mail-in voting, voting, mail-in voting. You know, Alex. frankly, both all the the uh, corruption I hear about the voting yeah. places. Like the physical ones see, are hackable too. Yeah, I don't see it being any less secure voting from home than it is what I've heard of the stories. So that's just my own two cents. Like that's what I'm passionate about. It's not which party, because I've never how to vote. I've never actually met a politician that I've <laughs> been thoroughly impressed with. Yeah. A couple. I, I had one or two, but there was no way that they would get in the system because they were nowhere close. Oh, they came close, but just the system's hacked in my opinion. Oh, got to pause for a second again. Okay, we're back. Um, Where were we? I don't know. I always lose my train You're of thought. You were saying that the people, the people that tweeted, like, actually didn't go very far. Yeah, I don't remember where I was going with that. Sorry. Need better politician choices. More that aren't just like wine scumbags. Well, okay. Like we live in America, where I can say something like that. I'm not gonna arrest it. Yes, I don't. I don't think. Being. I don't think anybody is necessarily. I don't think. In my belief system, I don't believe any of the politicians actually are lying, or that they know they're the lying. Um, I think they're just contradictory. Contradictory, or I think you know everybody. I think everyone's a hypocrite. So. I mean, do you know anybody who's not a hypocrite? Like, do you honestly know somebody who's not a hypocrite? A single person. So, in your opinion, you probably believe everyone lies to a certain extent. Me? Mm. <laughs> Most people, probably. What? Are lying to a certain extent, yeah. Right. And, and you know, I actually read somewhere that are, I'll watch this video about um, that people lie to themselves, but in a way that there can be some good to that, like um, like athletes who tell themselves they're going to win when you don't know you're going to win, but you tell yourself you're going to win so that you can push to get to the finish line and so you can push to get to the goal and to work that's out and do all that stuff. That's self-delusion. That's not action necessarily a knowledge self-delusion. It's accidental self-delusion. There's some, I don't know if it's, I don't know if some, I call it sometimes. accidental. Sometimes, I guess you're right. It's the idea where you motivate yourself. It's a purposeful self-delusion. And you could say that the politicians are doing a purposeful self-delusion for trying to achieve their goals. I think, yeah. But anyway, yeah. so I don't hold it against them. I don't hold it against the politicians or the people or anybody because I believe they all have their good interests. Their interests, not their in, not their personal interest they probably have that too yeah, but their, they have, isn't it, their, their belief system they have their values um oh yes more money huh? make accounts no, i don't believe all politicians are like that i really yeah. believe there are a lot of politicians out there who actually care about society and they just have their own values and their own ideas of how things should be and i'd like for you to start recognizing that every person every person even the people you disagree with they all come from a place that they believe is a good place. Like, do you remember that book that okay. we read about um, even criminals, that criminals and, and uh, people, 
were once considered monsters, that they really believed that, um, that it, like I said, they, they did interviews or something, and those people really believed that they were doing good. From the core of their being, they believed they were doing good. Right, okay. And so my point is that everybody has some sort of good reason why they're doing everything that they believe by their set of values to be good. Yeah. Their, yeah, maybe, their set true, of yeah. truths, their set of values, they think that what they're doing and then, is... But then it comes to the question of, they believe it's good for themselves, but do they believe that other people believe it's good too? Hmm. And That's that kind of gives a tie to the concept of truth and lying to begin with. Because, in truth, how can anyone of us know what is reality and what is true? Because we all simply live a shared delusion. A delusion shared by all of mankind. That we see, we see apples and they're red, and we see the leaves that are green. We look at the sky and hopefully it's not grey, hopefully it's blue. <laughs> for a little while longer anyways. Uh, and well, unless it's a cloudy day. Unless it's a cloudy day. Which point so as to be grey. Right. And not yellow. Or purple. That was freaky. We had uh, a purple sky the other day, but not as purple as when I was younger. When I was younger, there was one time where it was really purple, like for a whole night, it was purple. And it wasn't like a not like the um, what do you call it, aurora borealis kind of purple. It was, it was a definite pollution purple. That's not good. <laughs> Although Don't if, if you breathe. know if you know why the sky is purple, we'd like to know. I guess I could look it up, but. You know, or one of you could tell me. <laughs> right. But I'm saying, like, how do you know... Oops, we got to pause for a second again. Okay, so coming back, and you know what you're going to say? It's on. Truth. Oh, right. <laughs> oh. So where were... He was saying truth, right? Okay. Truth. Truth. How can anyone know that when they look out, and they use their senses, what they're seeing is actually the truth. How can you know that what you see on the internet is actually the truth? It all could be made up. Now, admittedly, it's a lot easier to fake a bunch of text on the internet than it is to fake your entire senses. Which reminds me, anybody who is afraid of this idea, don't ever watch the show Anon. Or is it you haven't Anon? actually watched that no, show, I watch by the way. No, I watched the trailer, though, so I know what the plot's roughly is. Yeah, no, don't comment on a show you haven't seen yet, please. I, that pisses me off. Sorry. Presumably, the show roughly follows the trailer's plot. But it does, but that topic that you're talking about does remind me of this horrible thing that we uh, did once. A friend of ours was smoking pot. And, um, uh, yeah, so we used to play these mind games with people on drugs. <laughs> I, on <laughs> retrospect, it was awful, right. but so the game was what's real? Um, and don't do this to your friends ever. Um, the reason why, I, the, <laughs> and I'm going to say the reason why not to do this to your friends uh, before I finish the story, and that is because we did actually have a friend. We didn't play this game with this friend. This other friend um, went into an LSD trip with the idea that they did not want to be in this reality, and so they wanted their LSD reality to be real. And so he kept taking LSD every day, trying to get into that reality to make that a reality. And one day he went in, and he'd gone in that day with the purpose of staying there. And while he was there, I remember I, I remember at the beginning of the trip, he was trying to get the cigarette to light, because he believes he could get the cigarette to light. Anyways, he didn't come out. He, I mean... Eventually, they gave him some antipsychotic drugs, and he kind of came back. I they give the LSD guys some more LSD. <laughs> have a reverse effect, right? Right. So, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's fine now. But the idea is, this is this is a dangerous game to play. That being said, it is a fun thing to do when you're sober of playing the game of what's real. Of how do you know that you are actually here? Um, I actually. No, you should be careful who you do this game with because I understand it. Um, people who have uh, schizophrenics probably... I don't know. There are people who have a... Uh, uh... Ask the person you're with, do you have a confident sense that you're actually part of this reality? 
Are, you going, to st- are you going to still have the confidence sense even after I prevent you from having that confidence sense? <laughs> right. So the, the game... The <laughs> Would you like to play a game? <laughs> the game you play is, are, do you know if you're really here or if you're not really like in a hospital room imagining that you're here? Or a Boltzmann brain. What's that? Um, it's similar to simulation theory. It's uh, a bunch of atoms started you know, randomly com- combining together and forming a consciousness that starts instantly hallucinating that it's inside of a small world called Earth that's orbiting in a random yellow small sun that's in a utterly insignificant, unfashionable but where, where arm is it? Where is it galaxy. really? Where is it really? On the middle of space. Planet. Oh, okay. But on another planet, or...? In the middle of space. And so it's a consciousness that, like, a computer consciousness? Just, like, sparked out of nothingness. So it's Instantly called... appeared. It's called a Boltzmann brain. Huh. So it's not a real... Not, not a, a consciousness, not a, it's a... It doesn't have to be a human form. It doesn't have to be a biological form. It can be a bunch of atoms that got entangled weirdly. Right. No one knows what consciousness is yet, so, I mean, until you prove otherwise. <laughs> so that's the other part of the game, is that, you, okay, so that after you do the hospital where you pretend you're really in an insane asylum and you're imagining this whole thing. You're actually you're actually in a room with white walls and a white bed and everything you imagine in front of you is not real. Um, they have lots of movies on it's this kind of idea. Me. Oh gosh, it reminds me of this horror movie that I saw once that gave me nightmares forever. Um, it was uh, where they woke up from a dream but then they hadn't actually woken up from the dream. Oopsies. And I, you know, and we've done the, this. This we've is the plot of Inception. Uh, maybe, I don't know, I haven't seen that movie, yeah. Point. But no, this was, this was what I actually did watch, they were in, in this game, and it had this little contraption that uh. hit on the brain or something, and they woke up, but then they were still stuck in there, and they were still stuck in there, and like the fifth time, at the end, they, they end it, if I remember correctly, I don't know for sure, maybe somebody knows what this, if you've seen the show, where they had some kind of weird, this like, basically a lot of plots, thing. I've seen at least yeah, two of the show's yeah. plots like this. But they end, I think they ended it where you, you don't know for sure if they've actually ever come out of the game. You never do know for sure. Um, and we've had it, you know, where we ourselves have had dreams where, like, so we, we um, both Eagle and I like to write down our dreams when we first wake up. Uh, although recently I haven't really wanted to do it because I've been starting to have nightmares recently, but it's just all the stress I'm under. Um, but generally we do that, but the rest frustrating thing is when we write down our dream. But you're still asleep, so the written down form is in your dream. <laughs> and then we so record then you, it. But yeah, so then you wake yourself up. You realize that you're in a dream, right? So you wake yourself up, and you go, like, record to write it down again. Yeah. <laughs> but you're still dreaming. <laughs> and you repeat this, like, three times. And you're like, ah, oh, crap. Because <laughs> by the time you actually wake up, you're like, what was I dream about? But somehow you know. You know when you've actually hit reality. Like, you know when you're fully woken up. You yeah, know. when you're asleep, you don't say the other reality. That's the, <laughs> that's the issue. Although that's not necessarily true. Sometimes, like... I, a lot to... of times in my dreams, I'm yeah. half aware that it's... it's we call it lucid dreaming, where you... You can kind of tell that you're dreaming. And the fact, a lot of times... I'm half awake in my dreams, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to remember this. And I do everything I can to remember, like, a, at least one sentence or one feeling, and then I wake up, and if I get, like, I, this is the reason why I hate alarm clocks. I refuse. This is the reason why I don't sleep. If I know I have to be awake in the morning, this is the reason why I hate, make, I do not make morning appointments, because um, I can't sleep the night before. I literally cannot, because I know that. I will wake up from my dream in such a startled state that I will not be able to remember my dream, and I hate that feeling. And so it's, um, I just I can't stress, I can't, I can't relax if I know I have to be awake at a certain hour. So, um, or if I do, I'll wake up extra early or like only get two hours of sleep. Anyways, I'm digressing. But the point is, is um, in my sleep I'll know, and so I'll be telling myself when I wake up I'm going to remember this. But then there's also the thing that you that we do where you write it down and you're dreaming you're not really awake. I'm just rambling. Tell us if you've had any experiences with this, your lucid dreaming experiences are like, well, we've got to cover a lot of topics that you're supposed to write about and say hello to us and tell us your own thoughts about. So what is truth? I feel like this is an essay for them. <laughs> so this is, uh, but that was the question of what is truth. So everybody has their own truths and be aware that every truth that you believe you have 
that you think is true. Oh, that was the other one. The other thing game we play is that, so there's the hospital room, um, there's the sleep, which, you know, if you're woken up, and then there's the third one, which is you could be part of a computer simulation, and we're just holograms. And oh, that one's less fun conscious. because that one's just like, it's similar to the, why did something happen? Oh, it must have been aliens. And the flex responsibility. Well, no, that's the fourth one. That's the fourth one with the alien idea. So the third one is the idea of um, computer simulation, hologram kind of thing. I actually always thought that one was fun to be thinking yeah. that I'm a, a conscious character, like the in Star Trek. Anybody cool. who's a Star Trek fan um, knows the episode with the Moriarty. Yeah, and actually, they've had several cool. of them where they think that they're conscious. The whole deck becomes alive. Most likely, you're not watching us unless you're a sci-fi fan, because I can't believe that anybody would. S think, yeah, but if you are not a sci-fi fan and you're watching us, way cool! Wow, you must have a very open mind. So exciting. You are in the shadow and that bothers me. Thank you. I don't know how to get you back. Can you move your head over this way? Uh, yeah, my uh, head's chopped off. I don't know. No? I don't know. Do you want to get a fill light? Before you weren't, your head wasn't in the shadow. Was it always in the shadow? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. <sighs> Did we ever do the actual original? So this is one of the things that we do is that, um, by the way, oh, that reminds me, um, for the future conversations, if there is a controversial topic that you would like us to begin with. <laughs> begin with, or maybe touch upon. Maybe. Right. Okay, I have a feeling we're not going to be able to do much more of this conversation because we're starting to get interrupted at a more frequent rate now, I think. Um, Anyways, tangents. Yeah. Yes. But so give us a topic that you would like to see us discuss. The fractal seed. <laughs> the fractal seed. But as you notice, all of our conversations, when we, when Eagle was younger, we used to go on these three hour long conversations, uh, stay up till one o'clock in the morning. It was awesome. I loved, you were an awesome kid, by the way. And I bet you could have this with your own kid too. If you, uh, um, didn't, if you, especially if you're homeschooling and you don't have an actual bedtime that you have to do, you can, you know, the very, right before kids fall asleep, they're like, let's ask this question right before we fall asleep so we can avoid falling asleep. And so, <laughs> as a parent... What is the nature of life, the universe, and everything? I was like, all right, we'll go down this rabbit hole and see where it goes. And it was cool. I mean, we were talking about God at the age of three. We were talking about electricity at the age... Well, when he was at three, he just talked about all kinds of amazing philosophical things. And sometimes, I'm sorry, I, you were just... Like, I swear he was a 3,000 year old sage in a three year old body because the conversations we have were just spectacular. And then he became a teenager and became more like human. <laughs> <laughs> I still love him though. Yes. Now you're less like the rest of us though. With our questions and ideas and trying to learn about the world. We are happy to hear, we would love to hear your thoughts on any of the topics that we brought up. Um, the original topic was politics, but we went into even more fun topics. The original topic was freedom, which I meant to transition right. into another conversation, but that, we'll really save that for another conversation. Well, let's let it know what it is so we can know for the future what topic it might be. Of linguistics. Oh, that's a fun one. Yes. But that would definitely be another conversation all on its own, and we probably do not have time for that. We've, yeah, we've, we've made it 30 minutes. I mean, that's actually one of the fastest ones we've ever done. Wow. But if yeah. you get distracted on too many side tangents, only two. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, if you think these are fun, it's random thoughts, sharing ideas, contemplations, um, hopefully we'll be a little bit more maybe less distracted. It really is hard on me More because distracted. <laughs> like we got to figure out a time. We used to do these conversations in the morning when we had a little bit more time, but there's something about when we start for some reason, it's like, it's like when, when Eagle was in my belly, whenever I got on the computer, he would start kicking in my belly. Just somehow he knew I, something, maybe the laptop was on my belly or something. It was overheating the belly or something. I don't know. <laughs> It's too hot in here. Or, or all parents, 
all parents probably know this. I like everybody I've other parent I've ever talked to. The minute you go to the restroom, everybody in your freaking family and the dog and the cat, they all <laughs> want your attention right then and there. Well, so same thing is whenever we get on the phone, whether it's a natural phone call or a recording, by the way, I hate talking on the phone. So if you want to talk on the phone with me, we're going to get you a pay per cal number. Oops, speaking of which, we're going to interrupt right this second. Okay, I got to wrap this up because we've got the, yeah, so we need to leave this conversation. Okay, so it was a mistake of mine to try to have a recording right now. Do a stretch. Do a stretch, everyone. <sighs> um, maybe we'll get a pay per cal number sometime and we'll do that then. Um, you can have a conversation with all three of us, which would probably be way easier than just trying to have one, two of us without my mom involved. Um, love her. You were saying, though, that whenever we get our focus, attention focused on something, the, yeah, um, that's just the like a cat, why... the thing intervenes. Yeah, like that. and that's one of the reasons why I don't like it having a conversation on the phone is because with a person one-on-one, -on -one, because, yeah, I am taking care of mom full-time and... I need to be able to available to answer questions all the time, like 24 hours, seven days a week. We never know exactly when that moment's going to occur, and I just need to be available. And that I appreciate being able to do that. That's like, I think, is the a most amazing gift to be able to give one's parent. And hopefully you'll do that for me when it's my turn. And, yeah, sorry about that. It's probably going to happen to me. That's, you know, life. And probably going to happen to you, so you might want to have a really cool kid at some point. <laughs> as cool as you, yeah. Anyways, talking at 90 miles an hour because I'm trying to wrap this up. So, Eagle is right. Let's do a body check-in. <sighs> By the way, we have a body listening world uh, channel. Really hope that you'll um, join us on that one. Subscribe as we try to get back in shape on that one. Take another deep breath. <sighs> We love you. If you are out there, please share your thoughts. We want to hear them, your ideas. Just engage in conversation with you. We want to know we're connected and bringing up really cool ideas and topics and thoughts. And I think that the more people talk to each other... Um, A good that, culture is one that communicates within and with and also not just to within, but also to others outside of its culture. Yeah. So, uh, well, hopefully, when you do comments, you'll stay positive and open-minded towards each other. At least just respectful. I'm sure, yeah, respectful of each other, because I'm sure some of y'all are very passionate about your ideas. Um, so try to be considerate of the other people who are listening in, commenting, and their opinions, too. So try to speak from a point of view of... Not moderation. Diplomacy? Diplomacy. Yeah. Attacked. Um, consideration. Considerate. Be considerate. So we would like to promote cons being considerate, being patient, being compassionate, being kind, and speaking with grace to each other. So really looking forward to hearing your comments, about any topics, and anything that you would like to hear us talk about. Do one more body-mind listening thing, or yes, that too. Uh, checking in. Stretch your arms over your head. <sighs> and as always, <sighs> thanks for watching. Be kind to one another. Mwah! And feel our love. Hey, he's disappearing. Ah!